Ken Mansfield. Ken Mansfield, October 14, 1937, November 17, 2022, was an American record producer who was the manager of Apple Records in the United States. He was also a high-ranking executive for several record labels, as well as a songwriter, author of seven books and a Grammy and Dove Award-winning album producer. From the 1960s, Mansfield was associated with an array of notable performers including the Beatles, the Beach Boys, Waylon Jennings, James Taylor, Roy Orbison, Don Hart, the Imperials, Temple Glaze, Harry Nelson, Glenn Campbell, Buck Owens, Lou Rawls, Andy Williams, the Flying Burrito Brothers, Eric Burden, Badfinger, Jackie Lomax, The Four Freshmen, Judy Garland, Dolly Parton, David Cassidy, Nick Gilder, Claudine Lungett, and Jesse Coulter. In the 1970s, he helped popularize the outlaw movement in country music by producing Waylon Jennings' number one album, Are You Ready for the Country, as well as the crossover number one hit, I Not Lisa, by Jesse Coulter. In 1990, he entered the gospel music arena and produced the legendary Imperial's Big God album, and in 1991 produced Homecoming, the K the Vocal Band Grammy and Dove Award-winning album. Then in 2000, the former record executive turned producer embarked on a literary career with the Beatles, the Bible and Boca Bay, Broadman and Holman. His follow-up, the white book, the Beatles, the band, the biz and insiders look at an era Thomas Nelson was released in 2007. Mansfield's third book between Wyoming's Thomas Nelson was released on June 9, 2009. His fourth book, Sumbling on Open Ground, January 15, 2013, is also a Thomas Nelson publication. Book number 5, Rock in the Hard Place, May 1, 2015, is a Broad Street Publishing Group LLC publication. Mansfield penned a sixth book, the novel, Filco May 29, 2018, by Post Hill Press, and his seventh book, The Roof, The Beatles' Final Concert, November 13, 2018, also by Post Hill Press. Early Life Mansfield was born in Pennsylvania on October 14, 1937, the son of a summer worker and housewife. He grew up in Idaho, in a remote area in the northern panhandle of the state, known as the Banana Belt because of the comparatively moderate weather. Soon after graduating from high school, he joined the Navy to leave his small town roots behind. Upon his discharge from active duty, Mansfield enrolled at the University of Idaho, eventually transferring to San Diego State University, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in Marketing. His first job was doing computerized cost, budget, and program analysis for the Saturn and Surveyor Space programs in San Diego. At the same time, Mansfield sang with a folk group called the Town Criers and opened a nightclub in San Diego's suburb of La Mesa. The popular club, called the Land of Odin, was La Mesa's former city hall. He also managed the band The Deep Six. Capital Records Through his music contacts, Mansfield learned of a job opening at Capital Records in Los Angeles. Armed with his marketing degree and a borrowed suit, he was interviewed and then hired in January 1965 as the company's district promotion manager West Coast, making him one of the youngest executives with the firm. Mansfield was promoted quickly and was one of the first young American executives the Beatles worked with since their ascension to stratospheric stardom. Up until then, everyone they met in the executive world outside their isolated and insulated realm was a lord of EMI, the parent company that owned Capitol Records, a corporate chairman or a high-ranking executive. Mansfield's age made him more accessible to the Beatles, who soon invited him to become a member of their inner sanctum. In addition to the Beatles, while at Capitol, he was also responsible for overseeing the recording careers of the Beach Boys, Glenn Campbell, the band, Bobby Gentry, Lou Rawls, Buck Owens, Mel Haggard, the Steve Miller Band, Bob Sedger, and the Quicksilver Messenger Service. Apple Records In 1967, when the Beatles decided to form their own corporation, they turned to Mansfield to run their record division and named him the U.S. manager of Apple Records beginning in 1968. Mansfield joined his four new bosses setting up the worldwide launch of Apple Records and the U.S. management of subsequent projects such as the Beatles' Acker the White Album, Yellow Submarine, Abbey Road, Let It Be and Here Jude. In addition to the Beatles, Mansfield looked after the careers of Apple artists such as James Taylor, Mary Hopkin, Badring and Jackie Lomax. At the time of the Apple debut, everyone agreed that the Beatles' first single on the new label had to be a smash. The group was stymied on whether to release Hey Jude or Revolution as Apple's first single. The Hey Jude, which clocked in at an unprecedented 7-11. 
However, it was still the era of the less than 3 minute record and top 40 stations gained listeners by playing the most hits in an hour. Mansfield came up with the solution by bringing an advanced copy of the two songs from the UK to America and playing them to a few trusted radio station managers who were unanimous in their decision that Hey Jude was the hit. They were right. When the song was released in September 1968, it topped the Billboard charts for nine weeks and became the Beatles' best-selling single of all time. In his position as an Apple executive and personal liaison for the Beatles between the UK and the US, Mansfield was among a handful of eyewitnesses to join the Beatles as they performed their legendary last ever gig on the rooftop of their London headquarters on January 30, 1969, which was captured in the Academy Award-winning documentary, Let It Be. Mansfield is easy to recognise as he was the only one on the roof that day wearing a white coat. When the Apple empire began to crumble, Mansfield turned on an offer by businessman Alan Klein to stay despite the promise of his salary being tripled. Mansfield saw the writing on the wall and moved over to MGM Records as its vice president in charge of marketing and artist relations. Two years later he was hired by Andy Williams to be the president of his CBS record company Barnaby Records in 1971 an artist roster that over the years boasted Ray Stevens, Jimmy Buffett, the Everly brothers, Paul Anker, Lenny Welch and Claudine Londit. Mansfield's tenure with Barnaby lasted two years 1971-73 chiefly because he wanted to take the label heavy into the emerging contemporary country market which evolved into the exciting outlaw movement. Williams saw things differently and Mansfield resigned over the dispute. Record Producer When Mansfield left CBS slash Barnaby Records in 1973, he finally fulfilled his long-time career goal of becoming a full-time record producer. He set up hometown productions Inc. and went on to produce the acts that he wanted to bring to Barnaby Records Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Jesse Coulter, Tom Paul Blaser and other cutting-edge and outlook country artists. Mansfield's five-year producer tenure with the Up all started in 1973 with the hit single We Had It All from the classic Waylon Jennings album Honky Tonk Heroes. Mansfield went on to produce approximately 70 songs for the Outlaws, including Jennings' No, one top-selling album Are You Ready for the Country and No, one single Amanda from his Rumbling Man album, a couple more years with Waylon and Willie, as well as Jesse Coulter's No. One cross of a single, I am not Lisa and not one album, I am Jesse Coulter and Diamond in the Rough. A series of top 10 albums and singles produced by Mansfield with both artists found a place on the charts and playlists and country and pop categories. The personal relationship between Jennings and Mansfield grew so close that one time the singer asked Mansfield if it would be okay to list him as next of kin on his emergency medical records. Mansfield also produced the Flying Burrito Brothers. David Cassidy, Don Harp, Nick Gilder, Sam Neely, Byron Berlin and Sundance, as well as David Jeffen's boy band Alexo before closing down his Hollywood Enterprise Hometown Productions Inc. and making his way to Nashville in the 1980s. Author While the 1980s were a decade of prosperity for most Americans, they were not for Mansfield. Facing insurmountable debt, he was financially and spiritually broken when he arrived in Nashville in 1984. After a born-again experience in the late 1980s, Mansfield rebounded in his personal and professional life. He produced the legendary Imperials and the Gay the Vocal Band's 1991 album Homecoming. The Grammy Award-winning album featured a who's who of gospel artists including the Gay the Family, the Spear Family, J.K.S., Hovey Lister, Howard and Bessel Goodman, George Jans, Glenn Payne, James Blackwood, Eva Mee Lefevre. Buck Ramba, J. D. Sumner, The Stamps and Ruddy and Larry Gatlin of the Gatlin Brothers. In addition, this classic recording received a Dove Award that same year. The new millennium brought additional creative rewards to Mansfield, who penned The Beatles, The Bible and Bo Gabay in 2000. Published by Broadman and Holman, the work had three printings and was the only book ever approved by The Beatles' Yoko Ono on John Lennon's behalf outside their own anthology. That literary endeavour was followed by the white book The Beatles, The Bands, The Biz and Insiders Look at an Era Thomas Nelson in 2007. The white book has been endorsed by many Apple slash Beatles related people including the Rolling Stones Andrew Lugo Oldham, Peter Asher, Alan Parsons, Robin Leach, Beatles and Beyond Radio show presenter Pete Dix who worked on the promotional video for the book and former Apple president Jack Oliver. Mansfield's third book between Wyoming's published by Thomas Nelson was released on June 9, 2009.
Stumbling on open ground, his fourth, most heavily endorsed and insightful book is also a Thomas Nelson publishing release January 15, 2013 and reaches a whole new audience for Kent's innovative writing approach. Mansfield published his fifth book, Rock and the Hot Place, on May 1, 2015. Rock and the Hot Place has been called a classic reminder that regardless what messes our family or friends might encounter, the creator is greater, nobody is beyond hope, and there is no need to give up on anyone. Ken Abraham, New York Times best-selling author and is a must-read for rock aficionados. In 2018, Mansfield published two books with Paul's Till Press, the novel, Philco on May 29, 2018, and The Reef, the Beatles' final concert on November 13, 2018. Personal Life and Death Ken Mansfield died on November 17, 2022, at the age of 85.